From the Herald, Saturday, February the 8th, 1896. Death of Mr. G.P. Bidder, Q.C. Public References The inhabitants of Mission were profoundly moved on Saturday morning when they learnt that perhaps the most distinguished inhabitant of the famous village, Mr. George Parker Bidder, Q.C. of Ravensbury Park, had passed away suddenly during the night at his town residence, Queen Anne's Mansions. The primary cause of death was the formation of a clot of blood at the heart, supposed to have been occasioned by some internal injury resulting from an accident in the streets of Manchester. He had been conducting an important arbitration case at the Assize Court in that city on the 9th of last month, and was going back to his hotel when he was knocked down and run over by a horse and van. The injuries received were not regarded as of such a character as to prevent his resuming the case on the following day, but at the close of the proceedings he was so exhausted as to necessitate his immediate return to London. On the 17th of January he made his last public appearance in Mitcham at the inquiry with reference to the entrance to the proposed Lower Mitcham schools. He travelled to Mitcham specially for that purpose, although he was then wearing surgical bandages. After a few days rest he again resumed his professional work when he conducted the case on behalf of the trustees of the Tower Hill schools in the claim against the London and Blackwell Railway Company. These proceedings terminated on Saturday the 25th, alt, and almost immediately afterwards the effects of the injuries of the accident begin to manifest themselves more seriously. By order of his medical adviser he was compelled to go to bed at the beginning of last week and though to all appearances he was progressing rapidly towards recovery, and the physician in attendance had given him permission to dictate instructions early this week concerning an important case, a sudden relapse occurred in the early hours of Saturday morning, and before his medical adviser could be summoned, the eminent counsel had passed away. His death was very pathetic, but quite peaceful. His devoted wife was reading to him, as he felt somewhat restless during the night, when Mr. Bidder suddenly complained of a pain, which he thought must be due to indigestion. Mrs. Bidder hastily summoned the nurse, and turned to give him a little stimulant, when to her consternation she found that her husband had turned quite pale. A doctor was in the mansions, and he was called, and arrived in two or three minutes only to tell the watchers that he was dying. Mr. Bidder, apparently hearing that, put out his arm, and embracing his wife, he died with his head on the shoulder of her who had so ably seconded the efforts of her honoured husband. On the news being telegraphed at Bradesbury Park, it soon became known in the village. The bell at the parish church was tolled, and many of the tradesmen at once put shutters to their shop windows, and such marks of respect have been pretty general until after the funeral. Much sympathy has been expressed throughout the week with Mrs. Bidder and the family. Miss Bidder, Mrs. Devonish, Miss Minnie Bidder, Miss Ina Bidder, now in Calcutta, Messrs. George, Harold and Morris Bidder. The concert which was to have been held at the Vestry Hall on Wednesday in aid of the new church has been postponed out of respect for the deceased. Mr. George Parker Bidder was the eldest son of the celebrated engineer who bore the same name, and who was known in the early part of the century as the Calculating Boy. The future lawyer was born in August 1836, and educated at King's College School and at the Universities of Edinburgh and Cambridge, and his close and persistent study at the latter university secured for him marked academical distinction, he being 7th Wrangler in the mathematical Tripo in 1838. Called to the bar in 1860, his thorough grasp of questions requiring special knowledge and skill soon placed him in the front rank of his profession, and before a parliamentary committee he was frequently engaged as counsel. He took silk in 1874, and shortly afterwards became a bencher of his inn, Lincoln's Inn. He was recently elected Master of the Library, and was next in rotation for the offices of treasurer in 1897. For several years he had been one of the leading counsel at the parliamentary bar and his name had been prominent in all the struggles between the water companies and the London City County Council in nearly all the important 
opposed bills. He acted either on behalf of the promoters or for some of the opponents, and in particular represented the interests of the Midland Railway, the London, Brighton and South Coast Railway Company, the Mersey Docks and Harbour Board, the Butte Docks Company, the North British Railway Company, and a large number of water companies. The extraordinary calculating powers of the father were inherited in a large degree by the son, who, it is said, could mentally multiply 15 figures by 15 figures and perform with apparent ease many similar feats. He has also been very successful as a cryptographer and published some years ago in one of the monthly magazines what is perhaps the only attempt at scientific method of analysis of ciphers. Mr. Bidder was chairman of the Danish Gas Company, the Canuck Chase Colliery Company and the Sydney Harbour Colliery's Company, as well as being a director of the Rock Life Assurance Company and the West Lancashire Railway Company. In 1878, the deceased permanently took up his residence at Ravensbury Park, of which he was the owner, it having been acquired by his father, the late Mr. G.P. Bidder, C.E. Mr. Bidder's residence in Mitcham was distinguished by an active and zealous interest in local affairs, and the service he has rendered to the locality has been of almost incalculable advantage. Many years ago, when the Brighton Railway Company promoted a bill in Parliament for the purposes of obtaining powers to enable it to take a considerable part of Mitcham Common, Mr. Bidder gave his services as counsel to the inhabitants gratuitously to resist the application, and worked so well for the cause that he had taken up that the application was refused. After that, in conjunction with other gentlemen, he spent a large sum of money in defending the rights of the commoners against the attempted enclosure of common land at Bennington Corner, in the well-known action of Bidder and Bridges, but in that case, unsuccessfully. He was also prominent in other agitations connected with the common, and when the scheme for placing it under a conservancy board was propounded, was one of its strongest supporters. After public inquiry, and in the face of much interested opposition, the Board of Agriculture approved of the formation of a conservancy board, and Mr Bidder was unanimously elected the first chairman, a position he was peculiarly qualified to fill. With characteristic energy and zest, he entered into a scheme for improving the common, and though his efforts have not always met with the appreciation they deserved at the hands of the people of Mitcham, no one who can remember what the common was a dozen years ago and compare it with its present state will deny that the work of the Conservatives has been attended with good results. He, in conjunction with Mr A. H. Smee, M.R.C.S., and others, successfully resisted attempts to get the sanction of Parliament to schemes for abstracting water from the Wandle by means of waterworks, and amongst his other appearances in protection of the interests of the parish, may be mentioned his opposition to the scheme to place a huge cemetery just on the borders of the parish at Rose Hill Sutton, which would have in involved a constant stream of funerals through the parish, and the strenuous opposition he manifested to the proposals of the Carl Shorten Local Board to obtain a site for their sewage outfall works in Mitcham Parish. With others he obtained a lease for Mitcham Green in order that it might be preserved and regulated for purposes of recreation, and the public advantage which has accrued can only be estimated by those who live in Mitcham. It has enabled cricketers of all classes to enjoy the national pastimes without let or hindrance. The policy which was pursued there was extended, so soon as the larger area of the commons could be dealt with. For many years, Mr Bidder filled the office of church warden at the parish church of Mitcham, and it was during this period that the beautiful east window, said to be the most beautiful in the country, towards the cost of which he distributed largely, was put up. Mr Bidder was also a trustee of Tate's Almhouses, and at one time represented the parish upon the late Croydon Rural Sanitary Authority. He was a Master of Arts, a Fellow of the Royal Astronom Astronomical Society, and an Associate Member of the Institute of Civil Engineers, and an Associate of the Institute of Surveyors. Mr Bidder has for many years held the Commission of Peace for the County, and on the formation of the County Council at once offered his services to his neighbours to represent them on that body. One paragraph in his address in 1888 is worth quoting now. He said, One matter of local interest would, at the proper time, have my special attention, viz. the securing to our district more adequate representation, having regard to its population and importance, 
you are perhaps aware at the recent meeting of the magistrates that at quarter sessions I did my best to obtain the rectification of what appears to me to be the injustice which at present we suffer under from having only one representative allotted to us. I shall strive before the next election to obtain a reappointment of representatives which would place us on a more equal footing with other parts of the county. Mr Bidder was elected by a majority of 150 over another old resident, now for some years dead, and that he did not forget his promise in that the records of the council will testify. Indeed, this question of the unjust representation of suburban Surrey on the council was one of the points upon which he felt very strongly, and more than once he referred to it, and sought, but in vain, to persuade his colleagues to consent to a rearrangement when the question of the future meeting place of the council came to be discussed, he was perhaps the strongest advocate of the council chamber remaining in London, holding, as experience has since proved, that there would be more difficulty in getting all the members to attend committee and council meetings if they were held in the country than there would be if, it, if held close to the terminal of, of the great railway companies, and so easily get atable from all parts of the county. At the second election of the council in 1892, Mr Bidder was opposed by Mr George Parker, a socialist. The inhabitants showed their appreciation of the difference be of, between the merits of the two men by giving Mr Parker three votes and returning their old member with a majority of over 600. At the last election in 1895, Mr Bidder was returned unopposed. On the formation of the parish councils, the deceased manifested much interest in the movement and besides attending public meetings where the matter was discussed, became a candidate for a seat on the first council, and being elected was asked by his colleagues to accept the position of chairman, which he did, and by his legal knowledge helped him to helped to steer them safely and quickly through the difficulties inseparable from the establishment of a new body such as that. Prior to 1892, Mr Bidder had been regarded as a strong liberal, but like many other good men, he could not accept the home rule programme, and at the time, and at the general election of 1892, with other liberal unionists in the division, issued a circular calling upon his neighbours to support the Conservative candidate, Mr Bonsor, and so to defeat the schemes of those who were anxious to bring about the separation of Great Britain and Ireland. <laughs>